they're called magnet schools because they draw students from other areas all around LAUSD. You don't have to live in the, the uh, neighborhood of the magnet school you're going to. So you could go to a magnet school downtown, okay? Or someone could come up to a magnet school here if one existed. Okay, so here's, here's, here's where it gets important, uh, but uh, hopefully not too dry. The magnet school system was part of a voluntary desegregation program. So back in the 70s, the, the uh, federal government took LAUSD to court and said your schools are not desegregated enough. Okay? They're not reflecting the actual population of Los Angeles. So a particular school might be 90% white in here, and it might be 90% African American there, or 90% Hispanic in that neighborhood. They wanted to create a system where they could desegregate without force busing. So they came up with this magnet system. And it's a pretty good system. It works pretty well. And it also provides, actually, in incredible opportunities that wouldn't normally be there in the LAUSD system. So uh, they start, the magnet school started, and I believe the first schools were opened up in 1977. They're voluntary because you don't have to take a part in it. No one is saying you must apply to a magnet school, but it's there as an option. And the schools, in turn, when a magnet school opens, they receive uh, federal and state monies to create and run the programs, okay? So they get separate money outside of the state funds to run any particular public school or the federal funds to run any particular public school. And the applications are processed through the Office of Student Integration. So it's not through the Gifted and Talented Office. The applications aren't processed through normal LAUSD channels. They're processed through the Office of, of Student Integration precisely because they're supposed to be a desegregation program, a voluntary desegregation program. Okay, why were they established? The court said you have to address these five areas of what's called racial isolation. Low academic achievement, interracial hostility and intolerance, low self-esteem, overcrowded conditions, lack of access to post-secondary opportunities. So if the, those conditions they established existed in the Los Angeles Unified School District, they wanted to come up with a system to address those five areas of racial harm. The magnet system was uh, schools were, were put into place. Now, when my kids were, when my oldest son is now a junior in college, was at Carpenter, um, I don't think this exists anymore, but we had overcrowded track. Now, I know, wait a minute, before I even step into this, landmine we're not going to talk about whether carpenters overcrowded or not okay that's that is not the discussion um i can tell you the numbers were very similar when my kids were here okay now that being said that being said we had actual overcrowded schools uh reed was overcrowded and um they were on what's called a concept six calendar at the time so we had kids going through that school year round okay there were three tracks you could get on a, a b or c track and your kid might be off during november and december and go to school january february march april be off major it was craziness you guys don't have to deal with that okay we passed a bunch of bond measures we built a bunch of schools again i'm not everything is subjective as to whether a, any particular school is overcrowded technically they're not so that being said, I probably shouldn't even brought it up. Okay. Um, again, I, I'm kind of I'm beating you over the head with this part of the talk because when we get to the application process, I want you to not go, that's not fair. Why do they do that? That's craziness. This is why they do it. This is why the system was put into place. The main purpose of magnet schools is integration. Okay, first magnet school created in 1977. As I said, there's 191 magnet schools now to choose from. So... That's why this, this is so thick. Again, I think that's about 30 or 40 more exist now than when my kids were going through. Um, and you could either have a magnet school that's just, that's all they are is a magnet school. 
Uh, and I wish I could think of an example of that off the top of my head, maybe Van Nuys Math and Science. Um, I don't quote me on that. And then you could have a magnet school that's within a campus of a regular school, okay? Uh, like Cleveland. Cleveland is a magnet within a larger uh, school population. And uh, at the end of the talk, after it's all up and people uh, over and people want to go about their days, if you guys want to ask me questions, about my experience, where my kids went to school, all of those kinds of questions. Um, feel free to ask them, okay? I'll, I'll hang out for a little bit. All right, like I said, they have these instructional specialties, and here's just a bunch of them. We've got, you know, any, everything from architecture to zoo, and everything in between. And there's even more than I listed here on this slide, okay? So why we're on this slide, and while you're starting to think about the magnet schools and whether it would be good for, for, for you and your child, let, let's, let's just take a brief moment to ask the question, why would I apply to a magnet school? And the answer is, is it in the best interest of your kid? Is it the right fit for your kid? Not, is he going to get into Harvard if I get into this school, okay? The number one question you have to answer is, is that particular school or that particular school the right fit for my kid? I had mentioned a school called Cleveland before. It's a humanities magnet. It's an outstanding school. Very rigorous, very high achieving. Um, uh, uh, it, was a, it was started by Berkeley, okay? Cal Berkeley uh, kind of put this pilot program in place, this magnet school in place. It has so much, it, the main component of Cleveland is all of the subjects that they study um, are emphasized through writing, okay? So it's an excellent school, fantastic school. If your kid doesn't like to write, that is not the right fit for your school. I don't care how great the school is, don't put your kid in Cleveland, okay? They'll be miserable and they'll struggle, okay? Same goes for a math and science magnet or anything in between. Does, is your child exhibiting a particular interest in one of these areas? Yes, then go ahead and explore that. Otherwise, it, it may not be the right fit. So even though Cleveland is a phenomenal school, it's not for everyone. Okay. What are the types of magnets? Uh, and I'll go into a little bit more depth in, into these. So uh, we have random lottery magnets, which means that the, they're just picked by ra uh, randomly. You're st the, the application is chosen randomly with a certain weight applied to it, and I'll explain that in a moment. We have, uh, um, and in random lottery magnets, the admission criteria is based on magnet points. We'll talk about that. Entrants are chosen on a lottery system, which attain, and now uh, uh, this, these figures may be slightly different. I believe they're correct. If not, you can, you can look. They want to maintain a 30% white or 40%, depending if they have a waiver, to 70% non-white balance at the magnet school, okay? I, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. That's just the way it is. So it, it's done specifically to desegregate. So before you go, well, that's not fair. That's not the purpose of magnet schools. And, and, and part of it, the problem is they're kind of a... Uh, um, a victim of their own success. They're so, some of these schools are doing so well that everyone wants to get into them, okay? And the problem is the, the, the lottery is gonna based, be based on trying to maintain this ratio of white to non-white because it's a desegregation program which reflects the ratio of white to non-white in greater Los Angeles. That's why these numbers are there. That's why the court decided on those numbers. Then we also have criterion-based magnets. We have gifted and high ability centers. We'll talk about those. We have, um, and those are based on identified giftness. We all think our children are gifted and amazing and wonderful and high achieving and they can do no wrong, but it has to be identified giftness, okay? Giftedness. Um, and that will, that, that uh, is based on high standardized test scores or an IQ test administered by an LAUSD psychologist. I believe all that information is still correct. Don't, uh, don't start running to the office and ask for a psychologist to test your kid just yet, okay? All right. 
talk to your teachers first. That's the uh, advice I give to all parents. Um, okay. So I'm going to run through, because I know, again, every one of your children is gifted in high ability. I'm certain of it. So I'm going to run through, because you're probably wondering how to do this. Um, they, this, is, this is very dry. So you have it in the thing, in the handout. You have to demonstrate, again, your teacher will help you with this, and your, uh, just go to your teacher. High ability to me <laughs> demonstrate the ability to meet all four of these critical thinking and problem-solving problem skills in their primary language. Explain meanings or relationships among facts, information, or concepts that demonstrate depth and complexity, okay? So it's not just parroting something back. It's exhibiting depth and complexity in any particular area. Formulate new ideas or solutions and elaborate on the information. Use alternative methods in approaching new or unfamiliar mathematical problems. Use creative vocabulary easily and accurately to express creative ideas. So these four areas, they have to demonstrate all. Now, some, of you, some children don't respond to testing, okay? But they may respond to these four areas. So that's why this is here. And, it, and again, your parent and the teacher working together can identify, you know what, your kid has this ability in these four areas. We might want to consider, he might be considered or she, uh, gifted high ability. Okay. Now, get it, or, or have percentile scores of 85% or above in the standardized norm reference tests in both total reading and total math. Uh, for CST, scale scores must be as follows. And I believe these numbers are correct. Okay. Scaled score of 450 or above in English, language arts, scaled, scaled score of 455 or above in math, um, grades two to seven. Okay. So that's a, a hard number that you go, oh, well, got a 680. I don't know what they are. What, I don't know what the scores are anymore because we haven't done it. It's not an SAT? Oh, okay. All right. He scored a 32. All right. Um, a scaled score of 455 or above in one of the following, Algebra 1, 2, Geometry, Integrated Math. I'm sure all of your kids are taking Algebra 2 and Geometry and Integrated Math. They're all highly gifted. I know it. I'm certain of it. Be identified as gifted. And then here's the uh, or, not and, or be identified as gifted by an LAUSD school psychologist in the intellectual high achievement or specific academic categories, okay? I'm going to go past this now. We all agree that our children are gifted, highly gifted, high ability, wonderful, awesome people. Um, now, within that group of gifted, high ability, high achieving students, there is one tenth of one percent who can be identified as highly gifted. And and again, please know th these are not um, value judgments. Even though it's highly gifted, sounds better than gifted, sounds better than whatever. Um, these are these are just scientific designations. Don't 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 fret. Um, Thank you. Uh, so 99.9% on um, one of these uh, intelligent tests administered by LASD. So it's like my fingernail on my body, okay? It's very, very small number. That being said, I'm sure there's plenty of highly gifted kids here. Uh, now, if, if there's a highly gifted magnet and they have space, they will start to accept kids who, it, who test at 99.5, a much broader designation of students 99.5 uh they're just gonna be knocking down the doors um on LAUSD intellectual assessment now why don't they go why don't they just keep going down why don't they just keep going to 98 97 96 90 85 the programs are serving a particular type of student who learns in a particular type of way they want to make sure that the kids will be happy in those programs and they may not even be happy in that program anyway, even if they scored at this, okay? So you gotta know your kid. So they're not, it's not, we're going to then low, uh, bring in kids at, 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 who scored lower because it may not, it's certainly, uh, the odds are it won't be the right program for them, okay? It's not a value judgment, it's just people's brains work differently. Okay, um, now if you are certain that you're, your child or your child's been tested or they score, may have had those scores, uh, those, 
they have to have that designation before this application is due. It's due November 15th, 5 p.m., okay? So you got to make sure you talk with your teacher first and then go through that process that all that paperwork is done by November 15th. Not just the application, but that they've been identified gifted, high ability, or highly gifted. Okay. <sighs> now, this is kind of the, the meat here. How many of you, let me ask this question, how many of you had heard of, of the magnet program before today? How many of you have applied to a magnet school before today? Okay, so there's, there's a good amount. Okay, good. How many of you have no idea how this works? All right. This, th th this is how it works with the caveat that I'm not an LUSD employee. I'm just a dumb dad. Okay. So the process is based on integration, as we said, reducing those five harms of racial isolation, and it's called the priority point system. I'm going to sit for this. The computer, which is like some supercomputer downtown, awards points based on the following. Matriculation. So if you have a, a child, this won't apply necessarily to any of your students are here, but you may have a sibling. If you have a child at a magnet currently, let's say they're at a magnet that goes K through six, and you want them to go to a magnet school for seventh, eighth, ninth, and on, or they're in eighth and you want them to go to a magnet high school. They're in a magnet school currently and they're matriculating to another magnet school. You get 12 points. That's a lot of points in the priority point system. Why? Because if you're in that system, they want to keep you in that system. So you're going to get, your application will get weighted with 12 points. Okay? It's a good thing. And it's only awarded at that year of matriculation. They don't carry year after year, okay? So only like eighth to ninth, let's use as an example. Uh, if you're at a multi-level magnet school, um, like Sherman Oaks CES, maybe some of you guys have heard of that school. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's four through 12. Is that right? Yeah, so four through 12, you don't get points at eighth grade, okay? Because you're in the, the uh, the multi-level magnet school. This is the one that's going to apply to most of you guys, the wait list. You apply to a magnet school, you get a letter back saying there was no room or your, your, your application wasn't chosen, you get awarded four wait list points, okay? Not as much as 12, but it's something. Applicants on a valid magnet waiting list and not already enrolled in a magnet school program, oh, thank you, will receive four points. Okay. Now, you're going to get four points for every year that you apply. This is where it gets a little tricky. And you don't get in. You get waitlisted. So let's go back a couple of years because they look at a three-year window. Okay. So let's say I'm... I'm like you guys, I'm applying to a magnet school, and, and again, we'll talk about how this applies to you in a minute, because most of you are thinking, I love it here, why would I leave? And, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But let's just say I'm in, I have a student in fifth grade, <clears throat> I apply to a magnet school, he's not accepted, I get waitlisted, I get four points. Going back the year prior in fourth grade, I applied to a magnet school. We'll use Sherman Oaks CES as an example. My kid was in third, I applied for fourth, he didn't get in, I got four points. In fourth, I do it again, Go, going into fifth, I apply, he doesn't get in, I get four more points, now I've got eight points. You can have up to 12 wait list points, okay? So that's three years of being wait listed. All right, maximum of 12, those points carry over, yes. Yeah, you know what, it's, uh, it, yeah, she, she asked, on the slide it says, for each of the two consecutive previous years, I'm including this current year as the third year. Um, so however you want to think of it, it could say three, it could say two. It, I'm assuming that this current year, for this application, I just got waitlisted, and then it's looking back to prior years. It's a great question, because it's confusing. 
Okay, points are awarded for what's what are called FABAO schools. And you're in the LAUSD system. You know about acronyms, anything related to the government. They love to come up with acronyms. FABAO stands for predominantly Hispanic, Black, Asian, and other non-Anglo people. Okay? So when you hear the word FABAO, now, you, now you've got that in your back pocket. You can throw it around it at parties and things um, and say, yeah, my kid's at a FABAO school. Um, Carpenter's not a FABAO school, but Walter Reed is, okay? That, no, that's important. Walter Reed is. So when you're, in, when you're applying to, if you're, if you're applying to middle schools, or, uh, then you would get four points for Walter Reed being a FABAO school. Your neighborhood school is predominantly Hispanic, Black, Anglo, uh, uh, Asian, or other non-white, Okay. My, all of my children went through Walter Reed. Okay, that's, I'm just going to let you know that. Um, okay. So you get four points for, for being in a Fabau neighborhood. It's not the school you're applying to. It's your neighborhood school. Your neighborhood, yes. It's also not the school you're in. So our fifth graders get their four points because their neighborhood middle school. Exactly, but the fourth graders wouldn't. Okay, so the question was, it's, it's not the school you're in, it's the school, the, the, this, for the school you'd be in the following year that you're applying to, okay? So a fifth grader would get four FABAO points, but a fourth grader wouldn't because Carpenter is not predominantly Hispanic, Black, Asian, or other non-Anglo. Okay. So again, you'll see there, the resident school must be designated a FABAO school. Those aren't cumulative. Sure. You get four points. Now, I, call Walter Reed. I don't think the demographics have changed significantly since my kids went through there. I believe it is still a Fabau school. It is? They are absolutely on the line. There's Fabau, but by... By a hair. Less than five kids. All right. Less than five kids. <laughs> there's, there's, there's mutterings of Fabau everywhere. Fabau, 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 Fabau. All right, that's very good. You guys are learning. It's excellent. Yes, so the question is, let's say you apply to another school, not Reed. Your neighborhood school, Reed, is a FABAO school, but you apply to another school, you get waitlisted. You get four points. You get those four points, but they don't carry over each year. It's in just the year you're applying. So let's say in the, in the following year, uh, five white kids run over to read and it's not a Fabau school anymore. <laughs> you don't get those points. Hey, we can talk frankly, right? We're, it's, this isn't. <laughs> that year you'd. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the cumulative points in a sec, but yes, that would be correct. So you got waitlisted, you get four, four points for being in a FABAO school. Okay. Are we, are we good on FABAO? Yeah, yes. So if my resident school, our resident school is Walter Reed. Yes, it is. Assuming, assuming you're not lying on your, and that's a no, another subject I'm not going to touch. Right. Walter Reed, your, your home school, going into sixth grade, will your kid get in there? Is the school designated as a magnet school, or is there a magnet inside of Walter Reed? There are, no ma there are no magnets inside Walter Reed. Those are all, those are all what's called academies, and, and, and I'll try and touch on that at the end. Okay. okay? So you don't – Walter Reed, you will apply to certain academies if your kids are going to read, and I would highly suggest that, apply to the academies. I'll talk about the academies. Yeah, great. Um, but, uh, but, um, you don't, it's not, it's separate from the magnet school. Okay. And if I'm saying anything wrong, you stop me. All right. Okay, great. All right. So the other thing is overcrowded. I don't think this exists anymore. So, uh, I, I don't think there are overcrowded schools that are literally overcrowded. I could be wrong. There may be, but like I said, when my kids were, were at Reed, 
uh, at least my first two, they were on multi-track calendars. So Reed was a full-on overcrowded school. <clears throat> so one-third of the po student population was in the school at any given, two-thirds of the student population was at the school at any given day of the, of the calendar year, okay? And one-third was off because they couldn't have all of the students in the school at the same time. Okay. Um, concept six calendar I don't think even exists anymore. Um, and so we'll just play. All right, sibling. You get three points. Let's say you have a, uh, uh, your, your older daughters at the Van Nuys Math and Science, and you want your son to go there as well. Get three points um, for having a sibling in that, in the, in that magnet program. So uh, it has to be at the same school that you're applying to. And I'm sure you can, why do you think they want to give three points to siblings? Because they want to keep families together. It's a good thing. They want to keep families together, okay? So they're going to add some weight to that application in the computer system by giving it extra points. Oh, students must reside at the same address. I'm not, I'm not going to touch it uh, other than to say, for, for, your, for your children, I beg of you, don't lie. <laughs> Seriously, don't lie. Um, you, ha uh, you have to be at the same address, okay? Because kids pick up everything. All right, so now let's get an example, okay? We have Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, we go back a couple of years. Her resident school, let's say she's applying to, uh, her resident school is Reed. Uh, again, we'll... I'm sure I'll, you'll poke holes in this example. That's okay. She get, It's a Fabau school. She gets four points. The first year that she applies, she's applying with four points. Okay? So she applies to a school, and she's weighted against other applications. First of all, to try and keep that racial mix. And then secondly, how many points is that application? How heavy is it in the computer model? It has four points. She gets waitlisted. She doesn't get in. She gets a letter. You're waitlisted. So now, when she applies the following year, okay, she's going to have eight points. Four for Fabau, four for those waitlist points that she got. So in the second year she's applying, she's applying with eight points. Remember, Fabau points are not cumulative. Okay? The following year, this current school year, she's applying with eight points. Plus, her neighborhood school, uh, no, sorry, that's right. Resident school is Fabau. I think I messed up. Let me see. Yeah, so that should be eight that she's applying with. So this, so just change the dates. I, 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 you know, these were like 2006, 2007 when I was running. So 2014, 2015, how many points will she be applying with? Does anyone know? No. Twelve. Okay. So two years of wait list. Four points for Fabau. She's been waitlisted twice. Four points for Fabau. And again, if you had a sibling at the same going in the same magnet school, that'd be an additional three. She was matriculating from one school to the other. That would be 12 minus the Fabau points. Do the math. Um, so in that third year, she's applying with 12 Fabau points. Okay. So the question is, for many of you, I like... Carpenter. I want to keep my kid at Carpenter. I'm not sure where they'll be going to middle school. Uh, and again, I'd be happy to, to talk about Reed and pitch Reed to you. My kids all went through Reed. But maybe your kid is a super duper artist and you want them to go to a, a visual arts magnet that you've heard great things about. But you want to make sure that when you're applying to that magnet in fifth grade, that you have the best chance of getting selected, so you want to have some points built up. I am, I am just telling you the way the system works. I'm not putting a value judgment, and if there was a rep from LAUSD, they tell you the exact same thing. Not to, I'm not putting a value judgment on the system. I'm just telling you how it works. So, so let's say your kid's in third grade. You have no intention of leaving Carpenter, but you want some wait list points. you would apply to a school where you would have the least chance of being accepted. Okay, the highest chance of being waitlisted. 
I'm not putting a value judgment on it. I'm just telling you how the system works. So they're <clears throat> listed. Uh, actually, I haven't looked through this choices one, but they do. Okay. So in the choices program, you look at a school and you're looking for acceptance rates. And obviously, let's say in this example, in third grade, you want to pick a school that has a low acceptance rate that would be very difficult to get into for your third grader. And some of those numbers might change year to year. So you would apply, you get waitlisted, you've got four points. You apply next year, you get waitlisted, you've got four points. Now you're into it. One sec. And uh, the fifth grade, and you're, you've, you're, you're, you've got your 12 points, eight for being waitlisted two years, and four for a FABAO school. So your application might have a little that doesn't guarantee you're going to get in. It, it's still a racial integration program. You need to understand that. The, the, the best thing you can do if there's a particular magnet school you're interested in is to call the magnet coordinator at that school. And, and ask them flat out, what do you think my chances of getting in are? They might say, hey, we had more spaces than applications last year, or it, it, highly unlikely, or flip a coin. I don't know. But n not only for the application process, but to get a feel for the school, talk to the magnet coordinator at the school. Okay? Go visit the school. Take your kid to the school. Again, Cleveland Humanities Magnet, one of the best schools in the country probably in that particular discipline. It is not for everyone. I've seen kids crash and burn in that program. And I've seen kids thrive in it. Has to be the right fit for your kid. Question? Okay, let me, let's, let's use that as an example. So there's a school, uh, I'm trying to remember what, yeah, the school was, uh, the question was, let, I'm going to repeat it, you tell me if I've got it right. You not only want to pick a school that has a low acceptance rate, you also want to pick a school that your kid might be, it could be okay going to, because, and that's a great question, you might get accepted. It happens all the time. Wait one sec. Let me finish the thought. I'll let the spear land, and then you can, you can tear me apart. So what happens if you apply, you have no intention of leaving Carpenter, and your kid is accepted to the school? You thought, I'm so clever, I'm going to get magnet points, and the magnet coordinator calls you up and says, congratulations, little Tommy is in. We can't wait to see you next week at the open house. I'm not going you lose those four points. You don't get any waitlist points and any waitlist points that you had accumulated. Is that right? Am I right? Yeah. Okay. You lose, you lose everything. They take your house. Uh, right. So that is a distinct possibility. You have to weigh those, those, those uh, parameters when you make these choices. No, uh, and, and again, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is if they, do, if they have spaces available, they can go beyond those ratios to, to, to fill the program out, okay? So let's say there's a, a school um, that has, I'm, I'm just gonna make up a school, okay? Um, Sherman Oaks Super Duper uh, Math Magnet. And at the Su Sherman Oaks Super Duper Math Magnet, they wanna maintain that 30 or 40, percent to 70 percent or 60 ratio they they call all the applications they have um, 30 percent white and only 50 percent they, they've got spaces available 50 percent to fill with non-white they can start to accept other non uh, white applicants if that makes sense or reverse it maybe there's there's uh, too many white applicants, and you know, you know what I'm saying. You, they, can, they, they can go over those ratios if they can demonstrate that they have not gotten applications within those ratios that qualify for that particular magnet program. And again, 
there are all these math and science mag not all of them but many of the math and science magnets have no test to get in okay it's completely random based on on this so you don't have to be identified awesome in math it would help cuz that's the focus <laughs> but it's it's an integration program now absent of those programs there's also gifted and high ability magnets that you do have to be uh, identified, gifted, and high ability. Okay, so I'm going to race through the application. Um, go to the uh, echoices.lausd.net. You'll see the uh, online application here, and it's it's um, it's very straightforward. And there's a couple of things that you might get hung up on, but most of it's pretty straightforward. So, uh, echoices. Dot. L a u s d. Dot net and all the information I'm talking about today is there yes um, also just want to point out you should definitely apply online if you apply online you get a receipt immediately that proves you submitted your application if you do it on paper it goes to a big room somewhere where somebody has to sift through it and you won't if it got lost in the mail you're just out of luck there's you have no proof so definitely apply online uh, a, a great point, and like I said, when my kids were do when we were going through this process, they did not you could not apply online. So take advantage of the technology that's there. I know. Um, okay, so all student information entered on this application must be consistent with the information at your child's current school of attendance. Without stepping into a landmine, those better match up, or you're going to get bumped out of the system. Okay. Student information, all of this is, is pretty straightforward. Now, look, look down here under ethnicity. Um, let me see, actually, you know what? I'm going to pull, pull up the, ah, it's going to take too long. Um, you'll get the choices. Everything from you know, Pacific Islander to Hispanic to African American, they're all there for you to decide. One sec. So, so if you're interested in a particular magnet school, and maybe you, uh, and the gentleman's gone who asked that question earlier, maybe you understand that they, they, uh, they're looking for more non-white students than white, and you have you're you're multiracial. Okay. Then you might want to click multiracial, multiethnic, or choose one of those things. Okay. Um, so. Uh, and, and believe me, I'm not asking you to, this is really serious stuff. Don't lie, okay? Um, but there are instances where someone could I, I, identify legally as white or they could identify legally as multiracial. Question. <laughs> right. I would call the magnet coordinator at the school where they're applying and ask that question. Okay, so the question was, my uh, children are biracial, so which should, what should I check, essentially? And, and the answer is, call the magnet coordinator at the particular magnet school you're applying to and ask the question, okay? Does that make sense? You look confused. <laughs> okay, good. I <laughs> I have a few of those, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a whole dissertation. Absolutely. All right. Okay, parent guardian info. Uh, make sure you put your email address on that. Um, that's all straightforward. Okay, so these are your choices. You're applying to, to a magnet school or a permit with transportation. Now, those two in the middle, and I'll, I'll explain PWT in a sec real quick. It doesn't really apply to you guys, so I'm just going to blow past it. And these two in the mid middle, Magnet, uh, NCLB, NCLB, PSC, those are No Child Left Behind. California got a waiver for No Child Left Behind, so those don't apply anymore in California. So when my kids were in school, if the school wasn't complying with the No Child Left Behind 
um, standards, if they ha aren't, weren't achieving those, if they were what's called a program and improvement school, then you had the option, the choice to apply to uh, a different school, uh, even if it was, uh, I believe it could even be a non-magnet school. Um, sibling information, important. If the brother or sister, uh, you have brother or sister currently enrolled in the same program into which you're applying, remember we talked about those sibling points. You got to put in that information to get those three points. Yes, sir. Oh, you're right. That's absolutely true. So, so again, right. So the so the 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 point was, and you're absolutely right. They give you three choices right now. So, if the, if you're looking for wait list points, you probably don't want to put a second and third choice down because you have a better chance of getting into one of those schools. You had a question, I and I'll get. Yeah. My understanding, they did that last year. Okay. My understanding is your, your points don't apply to your second That's a great point that I can't verify, so that might be something to check with. Do you, do you have an understanding of that? Okay, so you may, so, so, um, Yeah. So the question was whether you get points for those second and third uh, choices on your application. And I, uh, I would just double check that with uh, the magnet office downtown. So, so, so the, the kind of the, the, to clarify a little bit on that, let's say you don't get your first choice because there's no space. You get your second choice. It doesn't matter if you have the points or not because you're accepted in. There's space for you, if that makes sense. Is that, is that the point? Right. Right. So, uh, yes. So just to make sure I understand this, if I'm applying, if I'm a fourth grader, so for this year, I just want to get points, I'm only going to put first place because we don't want to get in somewhere else. But the next year, when I'm going for six, I probably want to put three if, I, if I'm in, into the magnet system. I want to put three, three choices. Because you don't want to go to the regular school. If I, if, yeah. And there are three schools that you think would be a good fit for your, for your child. Yeah. 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 But I'm just saying it's different between. Right. Okay. Um, permits with transportation, PWT, it doesn't apply uh, to this particular area. We're not a permit with transportation school, so don't check that. So the one you want to check, obviously, is Magnet up the top. The sibling information you want to make sure you put in. Um, if your child is placed on a Magnet waiting list, do you want his or her name shared with other schools that have space available? That You'll figure that out for yourself. Okay, so the Magnet coordinators talk to each other. So they say, hey, I know your school was... Uh, kicking people off the, uh, the wait list. We have some kids who didn't get in. Um, you have room. So, you know, you decide whether you want to share that information. Oh, okay. So that's just the sibling information, information sharing. And then, obviously, this is a, you know, what is essentially a legal document. Make sure you read all this stuff and, and say yes or no. Um, if you have a problem with it, I guess you're not applying to a magnet school. Um, and then finally, you submit the application uh, by entering that, those uh, verification numbers. Okay, um, what I think I'd like, so that's the overview. I think what I'd like to do, uh, tell me your name again? Chris, I'd like to let Chris talk now. Um, and then we'll, we'll, if we have time, we'll open it up for questions real quick. Yeah, sure. You're collecting points so that you have, you have the option, if you so decide at a future date, to send your kid to a magnet school and give them the best chance of their application getting chosen. You may never. Like, we did, we filled out applications. We filled out magnet applications every year, and we never went to a magnet school. It's a good question. I think it's 20. 20. 
because of your th matriculation points, other points that may or may not apply. Essentially, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let let me let Chris talk, and then we'll then we'll go back to questions. Hi. So real quick, let me ask how many fifth grade parents are here. Okay. Um, so quick background on me. I have a so I have an eighth grader this year. So I'm doing all of this for high school right now, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but I also have a fifth grader, and it's a lot easier the second time around. Um, so we covered all the magnet stuff, so I wanted to talk to you about the options you have that are not magnet. Um, I know this is all gets kind of overwhelming, but it's also nice that we have so many options for our kids, um, besides just sending them to your neighborhood school. Um, so my daughter, who's in eighth grade, she goes to Milliken. Uh, Milliken ha is a really big school. It has, uh, I think it's over 2,000 students. Um, but they have, so they have a neighborhood school there. They have a performing arts magnet, which is really popular for kids who are into theater. Um, but they also have what are called um, SAS programs, um, Schools for Advanced Studies. And these are, Walter Reed has them as well. And these are specialized programs that are embedded inside the school um, that focus on a particular subject area. Uh, my daughter, for example, goes to the Science Academy. The Science Academy is a very accelerated program that focuses on kids who are very, very proficient at math and science. It is merit-based. You have to take an entrance exam. They have, I think, 40, so they have 40 spaces in the incoming sixth grade. They usually get four or 500 applicants, uh, and they take the top scoring 40. That's all it is. Um, in that program, they do, they do AP Biology in middle school. They do AP Physics. Uh, these are kids who are taking college classes in middle school. Um, they also have a Math Academy. They have a Performing Arts Academy. The Performing Arts Academy, you have to go in and your child has to audition. They have to sing. They have to play an instrument. They have to do a reading. They have to prove that they are talented at performing arts. Um, Walter Reed, I know, I think it has, they have an environmental science, they have a technology academy. So there's, there's a lot of these options, and I highly recommend checking them out. Whether you're looking at magnets, or you're looking at academies, or even if you're just looking at your neighborhood school, the best thing you can possibly do is go in and tour the school, and take your child with you. Because when you go in there, and it's great at, the, we did this at Walter Reed when we went there, and we did this at Milliken when we went there. The, the tours are during the day. So you take your kid out of school, take them with you. And you go in there, and you go around, and you see the classrooms in action. You get to walk in, you get to talk to the teachers. The teachers will give a little presentation. You get to talk to the kids. And that's the best way to find out what's going to be the fit for your child. Um, and that's how, that's how it worked for us, was, you know, we toured a bunch of these stuff. My, da my daughter was really interested in the technology magnet at, at um, Walter Reed. Um, so we had a friend who went there, she really loved the school, and my daughter's totally into computers. She was like, oh, that's great. So we went in there, we saw their fantastic computer lab that they have there. And then we went to the Millican Science Academy, and she was blown away. Um, the guy who runs the program is really charismatic and, you know, gives a great presentation, but what really sold her was talking to the kids who are in the program, and she was like, I want to be, I want to be with those kids. Um, so yeah, so, ta so take them. Um, yeah, go ahead. You can go take the tour whenever. Um, they'd love to see you, your fourth grader, and see, you know, and know you, because then the next year when you come and actually apply, you know, um, but it helps you understand what your options are by going and checking it out. Yeah. Correct, and they're separate. Yeah. So Milliken has a performing arts magnet, which is just a magnet school. You apply, you put it on the list there, you get in. Doesn't matter whether you're talented or not. <laughs> right. Get into the magnet school and not get into anything. Right. So basically, different groups of kids. Yeah. 
It is. There's some overlap between some of the teachers, and I think they all take PE together because they have they have dance class instead of PE, instead of regular PE. But but it's a separate program. And so, for example, in my, my daughter's program, it's the same 40 kids that started in sixth grade. They take every class, all six periods together every day, and then in seventh grade, and then in eighth grade. So all these kids and all these parents, we all know each other really well. We've all been together for three years. Um, and it's like its own little pocket school inside of Milliken. Even though it's on the campus, they're they're in their own little they're in their own little world, <laughs> you know. Yes. My, my home school, my home middle school is Roy Rome. Uh, she said, can you apply to an academy even if it's not at your home school? Yeah. If they have a if they, if, yeah. My, so my home school is Roy Romer. Um, but we went to Milliken and Milliken, the, Mil the Milliken academies, I think all of them, pretty sure all of them, they have open enrollment. It's merit based. So everybody who applies comes from wherever. There is no transportation provided, unlike magnets. So you don't want to, unless you want to, like traffic in the morning, you don't want to apply to a school that's far away. <laughs> that, that's a great point. I forgot to mention that, that the magnet program will provide the, the magnet programs will provide transportation. Uh, they won't come to your door and pick up your kid, but they will have uh, buses that come to particular areas in your neighborhood. You know, there's like buses that come to Studio City for Cleveland or for uh, Los Angeles, uh, SOSIS, and et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah. And so I was just going to give you an, another uh, example of, of our strategies when we were coming up. So both of my kids went to a magnet middle school, I mean, magnet elementary school, um, the Monolux Math Science Magnet. So when it came to fifth grade, my daughter had 12 matricula matriculation points, right? So the, um, and we applied to, um, we applied, we could only pick one magnet school at that time. There was only one option on this thing. So we, we did tour some magnets and we, I was really impressed with the Sepulveda gifted magnet. They had a fantastic tour. It was really impressive. We put that on the list. And so we, we put that on our magnet application. But then we went and toured all these academies and we're also impressed with them. Turns out she got into the Sepulveda gifted magnet. We turned them down. So we lost all those points. But we really liked the academy program that we did get in. So we were fine with that. My, my younger daughter now is doing the same thing. Um, and we, we probably will do the same thing with her because she really wants to go to the Millican also has a civics academy. The civics academy is all about uh, public service, public speaking. They, do, they go to city council meetings and they do all sorts of, of um, city government related stuff and things like that. So, um, so we'll probably give up our magnet points too. So the, the point I'm making there is just that magnets aren't the only option. Um, yeah, you, actually, we did we know, did we know where we got in before we said no to the magnet? Um, I don't remember the exact dates, but we found out around the same time. You find out pretty early for the magnet um, programs. I, and I expect, I have no reason to know for sure, that it'll be even a little quicker this year because everything's online now and, and they can process the stuff faster. Um, but you find out, and you have time. I mean, even though we turned down Sepulveda, um, I think it was the end of her sixth grade year before we stopped getting the parent bulletins from them and things. They still had us on their list. <laughs> so, yeah, just real quick along that, that, those lines, the, um, the magnet coordinators and the people who run the academies, they all talk to each other, okay? So they're all aware that they're vying for a pool of applicants, in, in, whether it's in an academy or in uh, a magnet school, so they, they're not, they're, they try their best n not to mess, mess up the situation for your family. Yeah, yeah question? It depends on the academy. 
diff, uh, how do you get in, do, do you have to pass a test to get into academies? Every academy has a different, has different criteria. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and my advice is don't get too caught up in all of these rules and requirements. The first thing you should do is figure out what schools you're even interested in. Figure out what your kid wants to do, figure out what feels good for you, and then figure out what it takes to get in there because there's no point in, in getting all worked up about all of these rules and stuff if you're not going to actually even need to use them. Oh, yeah. How do you apply for the academies? So it's a separate application for the academies to get in. Um, if you go to the, the websites, all the tours and open houses are happening now. Um, at Millican, they're doing them in November. So uh, if you go onto Millican's website or if you go onto Walter Reed's website, they have their tour schedules and they, yeah, it's by the school. Um, they're, so the, you know, the magnet system is an LAUSD wide system. The academies are individual schools and they have their individual rules. Um, and you can go in and do their tours when they have them. Yes. If only that were true, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, it's a lot of you know when when I was in this position three years ago, just like a lot of you guys, I had I had no idea that all of this was out there. That I mean, I knew a little bit about the magnet system since we already had our kids in a magnet elementary school, but um, it was a big eye opener and my my wife did a whole lot of legwork of you know she's very active in the PTA and she knows lots of people and she talked to the magnet coordinator at our school um, and did a lot of googling and and found as many in our case math and science related programs that were available and just started figuring out when the tours were and we just started going to them and we we toured a ton of them <laughs> The question is, what's the orange folder? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't know if the folder is still orange anymore. But the orange folder, whatever that that uh, what it stands for, what it designates, is that your child's been identified gifted high ability. Okay. I never heard it called that. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's old school orange folder. Yeah. Um, so so you, you know people are scrambling. Does my child have the orange folder? Um, just just. It's okay. It's all okay. Now, the, the question is, is there a catalog that describes the magnets and the academies? Yes to the magnets, not to my knowledge, the academies. So uh, the, the descriptions are here. Or go to the eChoices website, and you can look up the schools by, um, even by discipline. Like, uh, you know, my kid likes cooking really into cooking, what, what cooking magnets are available. So this you can get in the office, you get it at the public library, or online. Or online. It's also very informative online. You can pick based on categories. Yep. Two minutes? Yeah. yeah. OK. So we're gonna. Here's what we're gonna do. We'll 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 bang out three more questions. Uh, if you want to stay afterwards and come up and ask us questions, but we want to release you guys in a timely fashion. So. Yeah. Yes. They're they're LAUSD schools. They're they're yeah they're so they're they, how are the academies funded? They're funded by the monies that they would get per pupil anyway, and also they also do individual fundraising like you do at Carpenter. Uh, here. or fail to apply one year. So you could have three years, you apply, you fail to apply, and then you apply, 
let's let's just assume those those two that you applied, you were waitlisted. You have eight points, a zero in the middle, a donut hole in the middle, or you know, choose whatever year you don't apply. Or if you decline, you're accepted, and you decline, you lose all your points. And then over here. No, no. If you fail to apply, you just don't get any waitlist points in that year. If you're accepted to a magnet and you decline to go, you lose your waitlist points. My question, my question is, if, basically, if you have, say, for America, if you apply to America, but again, just to clarify, you have to have uh, like a demand in, in an application sent to the school. If it's a performing arts magnet, it would be an additional process through the school. No, the magnet, for the magnet, there's no audition. The Academy. No, Millican is middle six, seven, eight. So, so the question is, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not even considering going to a magnet school in middle school. Should I keep, should I, what about high school? And the answer is yes, keep applying. So you're at a, uh, a middle school magnet and you want to apply to a high school magnet. Right. Um, uh, I believe you get the matriculation points. Yeah, because you're applying from one school to another. You're matriculating to a new level, and so you would get the 12 matriculation points. No. Matriculation points are when you, when you at eighth grade, when you finish your middle school magnet, you get 12 points for matriculating from a 